One thing I know is that God watches over his word to perform it. And I have 1,000% trust and faith in God's word. Amen. So I know that as God's word goes forth today, something's going to happen. Hallelujah. And it's not going to fly by you and hit your neighbor. It's going to hit you today. And last week we found out why we were struggling because we want more faith, but in fact you need more Holy Spirit to get more faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Rima, which is Holy Spirit inspired word of God. And he's here today and uh, he's going to do some great things. Today we're going to be looking at the greatness of the fire of God's Spirit. Hallelujah. John the Baptist said, I'm going to baptize you in water, but you know someone's coming who's going to baptize you in fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm, I'm going to see the fire of God. I want more of it. But you know, only dead wood burns. So there's a, there's, there's a condition here. You want more fire, as we found out last week, you've got to have more Holy Spirit. So it's the Holy Spirit and faith, but the Holy Spirit and fire. And the, when Moses, I'll read you this um, passage. Where are we? In Exodus. This is Exodus 3. It says, Now Moses was tending the flock in Jericho and his father, uh, with his father-in-law, um, and he led the flock back to the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire. But where was that flame of fire? From the midst of a bush. Now this isn't the time when he encountered God. This is in time, this is before that. This is where he sees this bush that's ablaze in the, in the desert. And let me tell you, in, the, in those times, bushes would just implode. They would just start to get, they would burn because of the heat. So this wasn't the thing that impressed him. If we read on, we'll find out why. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. It was dry, but it wasn't consumed. So you don't want to be dry and get consumed. And how do you get consumed, or not consumed, and remain dry? You empty yourself of self. That's how you do it. So when you are full of the Holy Spirit, and you know, you're confessing, I'm full of the Holy Spirit, you can't have any drop of yourself in there. And when we do that, guess what? You don't get consumed. The fire keeps burning. So dead wood burns. Dead bushes burn. But they get consumed. You won't get consumed if the fire of the Holy Spirit is in you and you remove all of self. And that's a habit I've got into. Before I do anything for God, I just get every drop out, squeeze every drop out, because I don't want anything of me in here. Amen? It's about Him. Everything that will bring glory to Jesus, that's what I want. Amen. And there's a principle that we find in, in the Bible. I'll read it to you. It's 1 John 4, 4. And it says, You are of God, little children. Now, it's interesting because uh, when I read the original Greek, I understand it. Little children there is deeply loved and he's addressing his disciples and he's thinking of these people that he loves dearly and he refers to them as little children. But they are little children. So this applies to you. 
You are deeply loved of God. It applies to you. And he says this. You are of God, deeply beloved, and have overcome... There's the word Nikos there, which is where we get Nike from. <laughs> and that is victory. You are victorious. You are a conqueror. You have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Cosmos. Hallelujah. You know, if you could receive that revelation today, it'll change your life. Amen. Greater is he, and the word, Greek word for greater there is where we get the word mega, as megalos. Greater. Incredibly large, mega, hallelujah, hallelujah, is he that is in you. Amen. And who is the he that is in you? It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in you is the greatest overcomer. That's right. Resurrection power Amen. in you. Christians walk around like they've got no power. You know why? Because they're not ablaze with the fire of the Spirit of God. The greatness of God is established and deposited in us so that we can live a victorious life. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it super abundantly. There's no ordinary life as a Christian. It's a superabundant life. Hallelujah. And in Romans 8, let me get to this scripture. Romans 8, it says this. But if, the Greek word there is, more importantly, so the but isn't a but that you're just throwing away, it's more importantly, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, who has the spirit of Christ dwelling in them? Hallelujah. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, the Holy Spirit, dwells in you, he, the Holy Spirit, who raised Jesus from the dead, will also, say also, Give life. Now, again, this can be translated, infuse your mortal body, or give life. The Greek word there is, is, is zoe, the God kind of life, the life that you know, God has designed for us. But it's to infuse, to, to inject into you some power. And what is it? to your mortal bodies through the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, the Holy Spirit. So I'm thinking, wow, Lord, the very power that raised Jesus from the dead, and that, was, that took some power, is dwelling in me. Amen. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Why should I walk around afraid of what might happen because of what's happening out there? The greater one in me will always see me through. Amen. He's mega. He's not just ordinary. The Apostle Paul had a real revelation of this. And you see all these epistles, he majors on faith. Why? Because when you're confident that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, you can't but have faith. How can you walk in doubt and fear and unbelief? Because the greater one is in you. And if he is living in you, then the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the resurrection power of Jesus Christ will quicken, will infuse your mortal bodies. Christians shouldn't age. Amen. 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 
Hallelujah. We shouldn't age. We've got the Holy Spirit, the, the, the resurrection power, quickening our mortal bodies, breathing life into our mortal bodies. Hallelujah. Plan to live 110. Oh, well, Pastor Chris, that's a lot. No, well, why not? Think big. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is synonymous with fire. Acts 2, verse 3, remember? They're all up in the upper room and it says that tongues of fire came upon them. But Jesus said, you know what? In a short time, someone's coming. He was going to baptize them with fire. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit in us. We, we need the fire in us and on us. Hallelujah. So when you walk into a place, first thing that the devil will see is fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the fire of God, not your fire. He hates it when Christians are set ablaze for God. Amen. Hates it because he can't go near them. That's right. But if you're lukewarm and you're confessing all the time that you know, you're having troubles and this is wrong and that's wrong, there's no fire in you. In fact, you're quenching the Holy Spirit. Fire! Amen. Hallelujah. I know this is a difficult message for some nations. We've got 40 nations there. Hallelujah. Some nations that are very reserved. <laughs> a friend of mine said to me this week, he's from Croatia. Uh, Branko, he sent me this lovely clip and uh, it's got, it starts off with um, someone in Germany reading the, the weather report and it's like very, and then because I'm Greek it goes to Greece and someone reading the weather report and they have music <laughs> and the woman reading the weather report is dancing and saying, you know, it's a great morning, and all of that. And you see, at different cultures. So for some cultures, it's hard to say, fire! <laughs> Everyone gets frightened. <laughs> they go and press the alarm, you know, call the fire brigade. Well, let me tell you, we are going to be set ablaze today. Amen! Hallelujah. Yeah. We're going to be set ablaze. Glory. God's going to say to you, Remove self. Let me start the fire in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The early church knew about this. The greatness of God's fire was evident. The Holy Spirit was the main instigator of everything that happened. The miracles, signs and wonders in the early church. And we're always looking back and going, oh, we, we need some of that. We got the same Spirit. Amen. Why would it be different? Holy Spirit doesn't go, oh, well, I did it all. I, you know, all my fire is, is now extinguished. <laughs> no. We have enough fire in us to change the nation. Now, if you don't believe that, that's over to you. I believe it. Because I believe that it doesn't say anything greater. <laughs> if you've got the greater one in you, as we've just sung, nothing is impossible. But I want him in me and on me. Arise, shine for the glory, could be translated fire, of the Lord has risen upon you. Has risen upon you. So the fire in me needs to set me alight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. So you walk in, all demonic activity is repelled <laughs> right. because you've walked in. But some people are attracted to it and it's like, they can't help coming. And they go, you can see it in their eyes and you know they're ready to receive Jesus. Amen. That's the low-hanging fruit that we're always talking about. 
The Holy Spirit is synonymous with fire. Acts 2 verse 3, Matthew 3 verse 11, Luke 3 verse 16. Where does it come from? See, fire, Holy Spirit, power. So we want more power, but we need the Holy Spirit. We need more Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is synonymous with fire, what do we need? We need more fire. Amen. Love it when I see Christians that are ablaze Amen. with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. We saw that in South Africa when uh, there was this incredible move of God. It was a divine thing that happened and, and God sovereignly moved. But you couldn't stop at the traffic lights without some Christian tapping on your window witnessing to you. And you know what? They prayed, there were miracles. These are just ordinary people. It wasn't the pastor, it wasn't the man of the hour with all the power. It was just ordinary people who were set ablaze by the Spirit of God. Amen. Can change nations. Hallelujah. We want more of that. And, you know, none of this will, you know... My faith is very personal. Well, then you shouldn't be a Christian because your faith is not personal. Jesus died publicly for you. Amen. Amen. There's nothing personal about Christianity. It's to be shared. That's right. Amen. And it needs to be visible. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lot happening in the front here. We are sort of working our way back there. You can say amen in church, you know that? Amen. 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 Now, I love it when um, Elijah is confronted by his servant and uh, he turns around to him and he says, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. I'm building up confidence here. Great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If you have the Holy Spirit, the resurrection power of Jesus in you, he's going to quicken, he's going to infuse your mortal body, he's going to give life to your mortal body so that you can be active. Amen. Not so that you can chill in front of the TV. That's not what you're getting life for. Life is to be active, to change. The situations change people, change nations. Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed, saying, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. I pray, God opens your eyes that you may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. Oh, I love that. It could have been just horses and chariots and I would have been impressed. But this is horses and chariots of fire. What a scene. I mean, Hollywood could never reproduce that. A whole mountain full of it. All around Elijah. <laughs> oh, my man, Elijah. Well... God loves you just as much as he loves Elijah. And guess what? In the spirit realm, there are angels, chariots, horses, all designed by God. And guess what? They represent victory. Chariots of fire all around. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elijah prayed to the Lord and said, Strike the people, I pray, with blindness. <laughs> Imagine your, your, army, your, your enemy can't see, they can't do anything. But interesting that these chariots of fire caused something. He saw, the prophet saw something. He said, Wow, chariots of fire blind them. They can't see. And that's how he won the battle. Yes, amen. amen. Yes. Pastor Lorraine and I always pray that the devil is confused. 
I mean, he's, you know, he's a loser, big time. But when he's confused, he doesn't know what to do. To get, and if he can't see, he gets even more confused. So if you're full of fire, guess what? It's a double whammy. He can't see, and he's confused. The enemy is defeated. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Fire precedes the miraculous. You know, sometimes, I, the last few weeks, I've had notes that I've not read. Today I was sitting up preparing, and I've made so many changes, I can't even see it anyway. Um, just God's just imparting stuff that uh, he wants me to speak out. Hallelujah. Because what is coming, and I'm speaking prophetically now, is a move of God's Spirit that will be unique because of the fire that God has released in the lives of people. Amen. Amen. You will be so ablaze with the Spirit of God that you won't even know things are changing just because you're around. Hallelujah. And there are areas that God has targeted. Do you know the media needs to be set ablaze? Amen. Amen. So it needs to be set ablaze by a Christian that is in there. Amen. Hallelujah. When I was in the music business, no one ever told me about Jesus. I mean, we, we wrote songs about Jesus and we sang about Jesus and we did all of this. But we also did all the other religions as well. It was just like, you know, free for all. Not one person ever witnessed to me. Praise God that God is strategically placing people in the media, in the entertainment industry, in the music industry, where, why do, why do I think it's important? Because they have the attention of the people. And God's not stupid. He will go where the people are already, you know, gathered and, and, and interested. And he'll put someone in there, so they're looking at, Jesus always got people's attention before he spoke, do you know that? He didn't just get up there and turn his back to them. No, no, he got their attention. Jesus is going to get the attention. And it's because of the fire of God in something will happen. And things will turn around. We need that. And we're going into Parliament. Amen. We're going into Parliament. Been there a few times and I'm, I'm astonished. I, you know, I was there. I don't know if uh, Lydia is here today, but... She invited me to an event where they were all talking about integrating and uh, they all had us wonderful. I'm sitting out there, we got 40 nations represented in the church and we all connected, we all feel like we belong. No one's had to teach us, we've not had big debates about it. It's just the Spirit of God. Yeah. I want to say that if you want to come to our church, I'll show you that it works. There's no, you know, put the Spirit of God in there. He changes people's hearts. We're one big family. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And well, how does that happen? It's because God has changed our hearts. He's taken out the heart of flesh or stone and he's given us the Holy Spirit. So we're all connected. Praise God. We don't have to try to love each other. We love each other. It's how it works. The love of God joining us together. But everyone feels that they belong. And here is the word, accepted. I can't fool anyone and say, you know, I really do. I appreciate you. I love you. And you're not accepting them. It's acceptance. And that's what the Spirit of God brings. That's the, you feel accepted. First, you're accepted into God's family, but then we are all family. So we feel accepted. So we come in and, yeah, we just hang out and we have a great time. Who enjoys church? Amen. I love the people in this church because they all get on. 
hallelujah. And if you don't get on, you're going to feel very uncomfortable here because everyone's loving on each other and you know, hanging out and a good time. You know, the, um, the fellowship area there is just always full of great conversation. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Everything is going to be made possible through the power of the Holy Ghost. No one can deny the presence of God. The fire of God's Spirit will not only come upon you, but it's in you. So don't, you bring the fire in, do you know that? All the Word does is it breathes Holy Spirit, air, life into it. So that you come in and it's there, but it's not really happening. Hallelujah. So you leave, and you walk out, and there's a spring in your step. Amen. And you want to meet someone and look him in the eye and say, you know what, Jesus loves you. Amen. And can I pray for you? There's not some religious prayer. Oh, God! No, it's the love of God. Amen. It can be a whisper. That's what blew me away when I got saved. It was just the love of God. Tried everything else, it was just the love of God. The love of God touched me. I mean, I just smelt it. Never been the same since. Greater fire is going to be seen. Greater fire. We're talking about greater is he that is in you. Greater fire. Megalos, mega fire. God is raining down fire on Cornerstone. Amen. You might not see it. You might not feel it. But if you are obedient, and that's where being deadwood is important. It's just being obedient to the voice of God. When you are obedient to the voice of God and there's nothing of self in there, you ignite. Amen. And the ignition, that fire that's happening, is not for you. I mean, it's great to be part of something, but it's so that other people can get ministered to. Amen. You know, Christianity isn't about being on your own and, you know, it's not a hermit's life. I know some religions make it that. But it isn't. God wants you to engage. Amen. Amen. Jesus just went off to pray. Everything else he did publicly. Things are increasing in the spirit. Miracle power will accompany the greatness of the fire of God's spirit. Signs and wonders we're already witnessing them. Yeah, we've always had it in our ministry, but there's a sort of quickening here. Hallelujah. Why are signs and wonders important? A sign points somewhere, doesn't it? How do they know Jesus is alive without signs? Wonders are <gasps> amazement. Miracles for the unbeliever. Praise God. Can't get enough of that. We've had blind eyes, deaf ears. I haven't raised anyone from the dead yet, but hey, I'm open to that. Praise God. Pastor Lorraine and I had a young man living on our property at uh, Peter. He finished Bible college, went to his little village in the northern Transvaal. And he raised someone from the dead who was dead for two days. The whole village knew this guy was, I mean, he was already. <laughs> raised him from the dead. And why didn't it make the newspapers? God doesn't need publicity. But everyone in that village and the villages around all knew about it. Amen. You know, when a guy's dead in the village, they know about it. Well, why not? 
Amen? The fire of God's Spirit is not an optional extra. Oh, well, you know, I'll get baptized when, when I feel it's, I'm ready for it. No, no. If you're a Christian, you should be baptized in water and with fire. That's, that's, that's the word of God. Water and fire. So you need to be baptized in water, but also with fire. I'll never forget the day I was baptized in water. It was at my sister's pool. The pastor, just me and the pastor, and when I came up out of the water, there was such a relief. All that stuff I left behind, and I just came up as new creation. It was just so fresh and so vivid. Because you pick up a lot of stuff. Well, I know some of you were goody goodies, but I wasn't. Uh, you know, I picked up, and Pastor Rob as well. I picked up stuff. I needed to get rid of it. Baptizing me. I met everything was left in the water. I came out a brand new creature. Amen. Hallelujah. Baptized in water, baptized with fire. I'm going to pray today that uh, God baptizes you with fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you're already baptized with fire, that uh, it becomes a furnace. Amen. I love what Rhino Bunker said. He said, you should be ablaze so that when people come to watch you burn, <laughs> guess what happens? One little spark, and then they start to... You've got to be ablaze! Right. Amen. With God's fire. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Glory. Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater, greater. That means, see, if Jesus, if the word of God has targeted the world, the cosmos, it's the peoples of the world, then the reason for the greater one in you is so that he can overcome all the issues that the peoples of the world are having to encounter.